This is Gypsy, and we've been asked to do a rhetorical analysis on some of the images on Dr. E's fairy tale blog on Tumblr for the class. And I am going to choose the ones on his first page, which are down here, these guys right here, um, which were done for the Forever Fabled exhibition by a guy called Glenn Arthur. He's done a lot more than this on the fairy tale theme. And what I find interesting about his images is that uh, they're supposed to be a little bit um, libidinous I think is the word uh, they're supposed to be sexy ladies but clearly they are ladies um, they are very feminine in some ways yet they're also women that you don't mess around with they can kick your butt like nothing else so here you can see there's Alice um, Snow White uh, we have Sleeping Beauty and Goldilocks and Red Riding Hood and the ones that have been used in Disney films are definitely derivative of the art used for the Disney film. So I, with uh, my focus on Snow White, I'm going to focus on the Snow White one. So let's have a look at her a little bit bigger. In the background we have the shadow of the evil queen, um, which I find is interesting. It's like Snow White doesn't have a shadow of her own, her own shadow is the evil queen, which is something that it's a theme that I often uh, look at when I'm looking at Snow White. You see she's actually overlapping with her claws on Snow White. And the tattoos that Snow White have are also the same color as the shadow, um, which I find interesting, as is the poison from the apple, which she's not actually affected by right now. Um, the tattoos are really cool, and she has a number of them. The, she has the diamond seven here, obviously referencing the seven dwarves and the diamond mine, but also it's like a, a special charm here on, on her neck. Uh, they're her saving grace. And here we have these birds, which I find interesting. They're obviously the birds from the forest and that kind of thing, but these are also very typical tattoos of sailors uh, finding their way home, which I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, but it works really, really well. Um, in the middle, we have a picture of the mirror with the queen on there. This is both a reflection, <laughs> punny I know, um, of the queen of Snow White herself, of her looking at herself, but it's also of her future. So, and it's right in the center, which is often considered the heart of things. Um, that's, the, that's the center of her, what she's gonna turn out like. Is she gonna be a reflection of the queen? Will she reflect her upbringing? Is she going to be a whole new kind of queen? What is she going to be like? Um, on her arm, we have the coffin, glass coffin with the little kiss there and surrounded by the, the nature. And that's on one arm. And this arm appears to be the death arm, which is the left. Um, we have the dagger here, gone through the heart. And if you're familiar with the Disney film, you know that this image was actually on the front of the box that the queen asked the huntsman to bring back Snow White's heart in this box. And this was a little emblem on the front. So this is like the death arm. On the right arm, we have Fairest, um, which is her, you know, often the right arm is considered the leading arm since uh, left-handed people tend to be in the minority compared to right-handed people. So it's not, um, it, it's not a put down of left-handed people in any way. It's more that when something is on the right, it often means that this is their leading, this is what they lead with. And this is her main weapon, if you like, uh, that she's beautiful. But here you can see she has her very feminine dress on. She has her little corset thing here with her beautiful flowing skirt. It's a very feminine look. She has her bow, she has her little curls, and she has her makeup on up here. Very made up face. But she also is clearly somebody that you would think twice about taking on if you met her in a dark alley. And I kind of like that as well. Um, in the background, we have the wishing well and the woods, which again are part of the whole setup. What is she wishing for? What is she looking for? What are her dreams? She has to go through the woods to find her dreams. Now, again, I don't know if this is all intentional by the artist or if this is just something that kind of came together or something that I'm seeing. But this is how I'm interpreting this particular uh, image here. Um, I also wanted to bring up Little Red Riding Hood, which is not a Disney-influenced picture. Um, and I think I kind of like that for 
uh, those reasons because we don't have this huge impression of what Redding, Red Riding Hood actually looks like. There is no right picture of Little Red Riding Hood. Well, she's not so little here. She's definitely grown up. She has the classic quaff of a curl here, um, like a pinup. She still has her red hood. Her, she also has red gloves with slash on it. She's obviously been through a fight. Um, no matter that she's dressed sexily, she has her... Uh, she's obviously has been through a few things and knows how to handle herself. She has a memento of her grandmother here in the little brooch, uh, the little cameo. On her right arm, her right hand man, her wing man if you like, is her huntsman here in this telling, retelling anyway, she has him there. And on her stomach, which again could be a sexual implication, what big teeth you have, um, there's that whole thing about being inside the wolf's stomach, um, going through that whole trauma. Um, also, if she hooked up with the wolf, you know, that what would happen? She would end up being pregnant. Um, so there is that whole stomach thing here, and the food is also on the stomach. She has the the stole of the wolf here that she's kept as her trophy, and uh, the look on her face is, do not mess with me. She stands in front of the woods like it's her domain and she's pretty strong at that. Now these images, going back here, these images, is, as you see, they are supposed to be sexy. They're designed that way, there's no doubt about it. Um, they reveal a lot of skin, um, but they're also very strong women. I like them for that fact, that they are not timid about being feminine. They like getting into the girly stuff, they like showing their their cleavages, their shapes, um, they like having skirts, they, they like being pretty, um, and they go in for all that stuff, but also they are edgy, um, and they can obviously defend themselves, they've survived a lot in their stories, and uh, you would have to think twice about taking these girls on. The, the look in each of their eyes here, and in Snow White too, these are not innocent little girls that we have here. Most definitely with Alice in Wonderland with the blood dripping down on her face as well. There's nothing innocent about these. Um, again, women who can take care of themself, themselves, I'm sorry, who've been through a lot in their stories, uh, who are willing to tell their stories, they're proud of their stories, they have this strong legacy, and they're getting on with their lives, and I like that. They look like they made their own happily ever afters. Uh, things didn't turn out quite how the stories say, but they are definitely independent women, strong, but definitely still the heroines of those fairy tales. And that's why I like these pictures. Uh, even though I could never look like this, um, I would be very happy to have the spirit about me. Most definitely feminine, but I can take care of myself. And I'm a very interesting person with a tale to tell that will resonate through time. I like that a lot. Okay, thank you.